Hey guys, welcome to Digit.in. So we are here in Mumbai at India's first Dota 2 Championship hosted by ESL. The first one of its kind, of this scale, it's pretty amazing. But before we get into the actual tournament, I want to show you a tour of Intel's booths right here where they've got some pretty amazing gaming machines. All types of gaming machines, all kinds of budgets, all kinds of form factors. So let's, let's quickly go inside and take a look what's on display. Now inside, what we have is a whole host of machines. We've got desktops, we've got laptops, we've even got the Thronos over there. So obviously all of these machines are made and powered by Intel. And let's just quickly go take a look at what all there is. Right here is a one-of-a-kind Acer Predator Thronos machine. Now it's not just the CPU, but also this entire elaborate setup that they've got. It's all hydraulic based. You've got three monitors in, with G-Sync, all syncing into a, a duo of NVIDIA 1080 Ti's. And the machine, of course, is powered by the Intel Core i7 processor, 8700K. So let's just quickly take a look at what the experience is like gaming on this. So, it's pretty cool. You just push a button and everything comes down. and essentially so this is probably one of the best things where uh, the whole machine will tilt backwards and give you a complete recliner experience and you're essentially now this is the best way to game right you just lie back and enjoy what any game developer has to offer Imagine playing Forza on this, or imagine even playing something like Hellblade Senua Sacrifice. Imagine playing Battlefield 5 on a setup like this, where you have such clear visibility of the arena, and you're completely aware, you're completely immersed. And uh, the best thing is, there's also these. And, you know, like this with the headphones on, I can't hear anything. I can't, I'm like completely cut off from the world. So amazing. I can't, despite there being so much noise at the Intel booth, I can't hear anything on the outside. And this is literally any and every gamer's dream machine. My favorite machine. Uh, that's the Razer, I don't know what the name of the chair is. Yeah, the Predator chair. I spent uh, like 15 minutes gaming on it and it was an awesome experience. About you? Yeah, it's the same thing. Same. Uh, personally, I would like to take that rig over there, okay. the three monitor setup. Okay. I just like to take that home and enjoy okay. all day. There's also cup holders here if you want to have drinks. That's pretty amazing. It's actually made like for, ideally for any gamer. So this entire thing controls. If I push this, I come down. And just like any space age thing, if I want to get out of the machine, I just push a button and the whole thing lifts up. So this is the Acer Predator Thronos. Um, this entire control panel gives you full control over so many different aspects of the machine. Um, opening and closing, if you want to tilt the machine backwards, forwards, um, you want to raise the pedal, you want to just raise the arms. All of that you can tailor this to your specific needs but the bottom line is either which way you look at it it's still an insane gaming experience like there's no way to describe just how amazing and immersive everything feels it's probably like one step below vr but at the same time it's way better than vr we also have this lovely setup of a vr video game uh, it's called audica and the game is actually essentially about uh, meeting your targets and it plays a tune, etc. But what's really cool is, as a VR game, this is running off of the Oculus Rift, plugged into the Zephyrus, which is essentially, again, using the Intel i7 8750H, and there's a GTX 1080 for, uh, you know, all of the VR, to handle all the VR stuff. Now, for machines like these, for, or rather for, utilities like these for VR and AR you need a powerful CPU and a powerful GPU they have to go hand in hand 
So the 1080 with the 8750H from Intel is a pretty decent combination. Uh, there's also 16 gigs of RAM on board and there is a 512 GB SSD. So all of that's there. So what's really cool over here is the HDMI port is being used by the Oculus headset. But the way they're getting the display on the TV is by using the mini display port. So all of that combination, I'll show you what's actually happening. If we can go over to the other side. Now, excuse me, can I have two minutes? So essentially the headset is plugged in over here um, into the USB over here. That's a USB 3.0 port and this is the HDMI port. So that's where this is going. And the TV is connected over, um, I think this is a mini display port that's going in over here. So let's just quickly check out what this game is all about. I'm gonna put this on and, um, forgot I have to take out my glasses. So yeah, it's, okay. Right. So you essentially have to match the orange and the blue and oh, that's so cool. There's pretty nice EDM tunes happening here. What? That's actually pretty cool. I want this. Such smooth gameplay. Uh, pretty well made game too, no doubt. And all of that running on the Oculus Rift. What's really cool is the game is about this music playing and the discs that you hit at the bass line. So any EDM people out there who love to drop the bass, get that game. But yeah, overall a great experience. Of course, in order to run the whole VR experience, you'll need a pretty beefy GPU. And with that GPU, you will also need a really, really good processor like the Intel i7. Uh, if you're on desktop, you can get the 8700K or above like the 9900K. If you're on a laptop, then you'll at least need an 8750H that's on the Zephyrus. Uh, this is actually last year's model with the GTX cards. Now, over here, we're looking at two very, very impressively built desktops. Pretty much, pretty sure that this is going to make any gamer jealous. Uh, there's a 27 inch panel, uh, 4K, 144Hz, IPS, um, of course that's definitely the stuff of Envy. But over here, if we quickly come and take a look at what the configuration of this machine is, um, you've got, okay, of course it's cooled by Intel, they're using an A-Stack a cooler, liquid cooler, it's a 120 millimeter uh, radiate 140 mm radiator over here but anyhow uh, underneath that you have the Intel i9 9900k now that processor is uh, the best processor you can get for gaming as of now we've had one in our labs for a while gaming on it has been phenomenal it's not throttled even once we've never had the CPU hit 100% usage even once accompanying that is about 32 gigs of RAM and of course the nvidia geforce rtx 2080 this is the reference card from nvidia itself uh, which is why the more sober design and pulls in quite a lot of power so it's a fairly neat build you'll notice that there are no uh, sata cables running around there's no hard drive and that's because underneath the gpu is actually a pcie nvme drive in there and that's from intel it's got a 1.2 terabyte worth of storage and these Intel drives are super, super fast. So that's essentially what this PC is all about. And all of this is sitting on the ROG Maximus 10 Hero motherboard. 
again very it's a pretty impressive board but what's really cool is if you go up front and look inside the case you have this infinite depth going over here so it's just it's a very clever way to do this uh if you want to know how this can be achieved let us know i've actually built a table like this and i'm going to give you a proper breakdown on how to do this but this is so cool because here's the thing if you've got friends over they're going to be confused about whether to keep an eye on your amazing you know skills at your favorite game like csgo or whatever or do they keep staring at this imagine if this was rgb yeah that would be a crazy trip so we've got that cpu which is and plugged into the benq monitor and for the keyboard there is a keyboard the keyboards from hyperx uh this is the hyperx alloy i think and of course a hyperx mouse so unfortunately the guys at this booth won't let me play right now because a csgo tournament just ended but who wouldn't want to play on this beautiful 34 inch monitor this is the asus 348 um it's a 34 inch ips g sync enabled monitor uh it's got a resolution of 3440 by 1440 ultra wide it's got a slight curvature to it to give you that you know kind of immersive feel and um pretty cool but when you want to power a monitor like this and push it to 144 hertz or maybe even higher if you have one what really matters is all that's in there and i'm not talking about the rgb guys i'm talking about the processor starting with that the i9 9900k again we're actually seeing a lot of desktops with this processor and everybody at the booth is of the consensus that this is probably the best and the safest choice because it's one of those processors where you drop your money once and it'll last you a long time right um i'm personally partial to the 8700k myself but i wouldn't mind having a 9900k in my rig powering the graphics bit is a gigabyte aorus uh in rtx 2080 ti now this is a very very expensive card it's about a lakh and 30000 expensive well whatever but accompanying all of that is 16 gb of hyperx rgb ram so that's that and of course somewhere in the back if you can see that is a 512 gb nvme drive now if of all of this the components complement each other beautifully you've got a top of the line processor um which allows every other component to kind of run at its maximum potential the rtx 2080 ti will not bottleneck the cpu and vice versa similarly the ram 16 gb for games ideally is more than enough but if you're into creative work like photo editing video editing you want to do 4k you probably want to put at least 32 gigs in there and uh, but that's of course your choice depending on how much you want to spend all of this is liquid cooled and again if you see there are no sata cables running around which means no hard drives hard drives are so 1990s right right it's all about nvme now so this is one of the cleanest rigs at the booth right now um of course the case is an NZXT 8700 all the components are very neatly laid out the cooler is on top it's actually a 360 mm radiator which is pretty much what is needed for a 9900k you want to cool the cpu as much as you can so that it can run at its maximum potential 360 may be a little overkill but 280 is absolute minimum so there is your look at one of these amazing rigs at ESL1 Mumbai and we're going to walk around and we're going to get you more uh, configurations to see and while a lot we've seen a lot of i9 based machines at ESL1 this desktop in particular is powered by an i7 this is the 9th gen i7 9700k one thing that's common across all desktop processors here is everything is overclockable powering uh, or rather accompanying the 9700k is the aorus uh, rtx 2070 this is not the top of the line card um, there's of course 32 gigs of ram from i think that's that is g skill if i'm correct and 16 gb 32 gb of g skill ram rgb all plugged into again uh nzxt 8700 case beautiful looking case has wonderful cable management which is also why everything is neatly laid out and uh, 
again, there's 512 GB of NVMe storage, so no hard drives. And that's the most alluring part about builds these days. You don't need hard drives. And at the Intel booth, I have in front of me the Dell G7. Now, we've seen a lot of Dell G series laptops, but this one in particular is powered by the Core i9, 99, uh, this is the 8950HK. So firstly, not only is it an i9, but it's also overclockable because it's a K-series chip. It's got a 128 GB mm -hmm. SSD on the inside, along with a one terabyte hard drive. It's got 16 gigs of memory, which is upgradable, and a GTX 1060. So, all in all, it's a fairly well specced out gaming machine. I mean, I would say that you could do better with the SSD. You all could right, swap it out it. for a, you know, you could change the SSD for a higher capacity SSD. You could also upgrade the memory to like 32 gigs if you'd want. And uh, but what you do get is a fairly good looking laptop and elegant finish looks very much like one of the dell inspirons but you open it up and you have the blue accent lighting over here uh the g7 logo the back is also pretty elegant looking and um, a fairly generously sized trackpad what is pretty interesting is that the travel on the keys is not a whole lot but they're very stiff which means they're great for striking hard and if you're one of those people who like to really thrash their keyboards this is a good keyboard to do that on and um, there was actually a PUBG competition going on right now and this machine was actually the one being used by the guy who won it so you know maybe that says something the mouse he was using is the Logitech G502 Hero uh, again with Logitech G series headset although I'm not sure if the headset had any role to play in his winning but yeah, definitely the mouse and the overall PC did. So that's that's uh, very impressive. And an alien just dropped by. 17 inch alien. We'll, we'll look at that later. Um, and right next to it, over here, is the G7 again. But this is with an 8750H. Again, the 8750H being a very common processor that's across gaming laptops. So that's a quick look at two of the Dell's G7s in their various configurations. So one of the most interesting machines at the Intel booth is this Dell Alienware Area 51M. Now this is the first laptop in a very long time that not only features a full desktop grade processor, this is running the i7-9700K, but you can also open this up and replace the processor, put in an i9-9900K if you want. You can put up to 64 GB of RAM. There are four slots to do that. Uh, of course, it takes standard desktop RAM, uh, not desktop RAM, my bad. It takes laptop RAM. That's another thing. And you can even swap out the GPU. Um, so since there is no industry standard for laptop GPUs, Dell created their own MGP format. And you kind of have to buy that from them. But at the heart of all of this is the processor which means that if you buy this machine today as it is the i7 processor 9700k with uh, you know the 16 gb of ram you can eventually swap that out for a newer processor from intel and still have this machine be functional now this has been one of the biggest advantages of having a desktop and now you're getting that same kind of uh, benefits for a laptop yep so one of the other demo zones at the intel booth is right behind me which has been crowded since the very morning now over here you can see that there are two big displays and they're both connected to uh, zephyrus laptops both powered by the intel core i7 8750h now that's a fairly standard configuration for any gaming laptop the intel 8750h is in so many gaming machines and what's happening is it's a Tekken match being played between two players on a laptop connected to a big display using controllers so you know the whole thought of if you're gonna be a PC gamer you can't have the big screen experience well there's your proof that you can
So thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you guys for watching.